Po raz pierwszy mamusia zostawiła cię samego? Poświeć na masie, jeśli cię blokuje. Aha, bo przesuwaj meble albo coś. Jak jesteś taka mądra, to czemu nie wejdziesz do środka i sama tego nie zrobisz? This guy. This guy gets me. Hello guys, today I'd like to showcase a little preview demo of an upcoming survival horror game hosting by Sunka, a Polish video game developer. First of all, I would like to talk about what's probably the game's biggest strength and the biggest draw, its atmosphere. Holstein is a retro-styled game taking place in 1990s Poland. Now, as some of you have noticed, I'm Polish myself and so the setting immediately attracted my attention. You don't see it very often in games and it's such a shame because it's a perfect match for a horror game. Now, if you want to skip a history lesson on that particular time period, just jump over to the timestamp that you'll see on the screen. Poland was in an odd place in the 90s. The communism had just fallen in 1989 and so the repression, the brutality and the pervasive sense of surveillance were replaced by a great deal of confusion and anxiety due to our place in the world. Poland was behind in practically everything. The fall of communism opened us up to a whole new world of things that many people have only heard of in rumors. Suddenly we realized just how backwards we were in comparison to the West, especially technologically. As if that wasn't enough, all the pathologies of the communist system that were kept from the public were now laid bare. For example, the communist government used to hide the fact that the crime level was actually fairly high. But after the fall, media started reporting the crimes more or less honestly, leading many people to believe that the crime skyrocketed, even though it was actually much lower than under communism. That certainly didn't help the national sense of anxiety. As you can imagine, mental care system in communist Poland was... non-existent. Because of that, you had a lot of folk in need of help and not enough resources or even awareness to do so, leading to a lot of serious issues being dismissed as, well, that's just the way people are and we cannot help it. This, combined with the brutalist Soviet architecture designed to essentially crush the human spirit, led to a very negative perception of reality amongst many people. Not only that, but since developmentally Poland was so far behind everyone else, you had a lot of smaller, more rural and closely knit communities, often isolated from the big world that Poland had suddenly found itself a part of. Such hermetic places, with their odd and sometimes unwelcoming atmosphere, are perfect settings for horror. No cell phones to call for help, very little in terms of infrastructure and perhaps equally importantly, very few firearms. Guns were reserved for people closely tied to the government and not much has changed after the fall. You had to be well connected to own a firearm and the only other option was to get one illegally. You can't exactly find a shotgun and a box of buckshot in a typical Polish household. Because of that, the means to defend yourself would be much more scarce than if you were to set your game in America. Also, it makes the firearms that you do find all the more meaningful, since now they lend themselves to world building. Having said all that, I think Holstein built its atmosphere perfectly. It absolutely nails it. Everything looks exactly as it should. It's authentic and faithful to the time period. Well, minus the ooze, but we'll get to that later. In a bold move, the devs made Polish the default language alongside the English subtitles. Hello? Ktoś tu jest? Hey! Uh... Proszę, wysłuchaj mnie. Potrzebuję twojej pomocy. A lot of folk wouldn't do that and instead they'd go for the default English and perhaps no Polish at all in order to try and grab some of that international appeal. The folks at Sonka, however, stuck to the premise and it really paid off. The performances, as few of them as there are in this little demo, are absolutely excellent. Everyone fits their character, the dialogue is, again, authentic and faithful to how people spoke and in many cases still speak. I couldn't help but smile and chuckle at their use of colloquialisms. You can tell that it wasn't written in English first and then heartlessly translated word for word, but rather it was written organically to make the whole thing believable. Ale po kolei, Szymańska, najpierw obmysz sobie dupsko. Nie miałaś sukienki szytej na miarę od czasu studniówki, wieki temu. The particular praise goes towards Anna Steiner, who absolutely nailed her performance and made the character who doesn't even appear in person memorable. 
Pogadaj z gówniarzem, może coś z niego wyciśniesz. Co? A, a skąd ty... Kurwa mać, to lezie w moją stronę, muszę się ukryć. Po prostu znajdź Bachora! Powiedz, że jesteś jego wujkiem, czy... Kurwa, kim tam chcesz. Byle byś go nie wkurzył, ani nie wystraszył. This brings us to the premise of this little demo. You're a man named Tomasz, looking for his friend Bartek, and his search has led him to the house of the Janowski family, where blueprints that will help him later are hidden. Now, it is clear right away that this is a snippet of a larger hall, and so the entirety of the situation is not clear to us. We see some kind of ooze that sprouts appendages that cover a lot of the house, and from Tomasz's reaction to it, he has probably seen it before. Our only help is a disgruntled, foul-mouthed woman named Anita who contacts us through the house's phone to hurry us up and give advice on how to proceed. She also tells you that the ooze shrinks in response to artificial light, which introduces you to a very cool and creative mechanic, where you'll have to juggle a limited number of light bulbs and fuses in order to unlock areas of the house that you need to enter. Since you don't have enough to light up everything at once, you'll have to be smart about how you approach things, and it was honestly very engaging. As you search the house, you use another pretty cool mechanic, where you can rotate the room you are in in order to get a new perspective as you search for items and clues. And honestly, with how well made the graphics are, it will be easy to forget that this is a fully 3D game with a 2D aesthetic. Luckily, the devs made it actually meaningful, but not overbearing. You never feel like it's something that you have to struggle against, but instead is a useful tool for searching these environments. The character portraits that you see during conversations are full of charm and the style really lends itself to the horror atmosphere. Same goes for the sound design, which splendidly meshes with the graphics to create a sense of tension. The ambient in this little demo is absolutely phenomenal, and I hope that it stays the same in the final product. The puzzles themselves, using the previously mentioned mechanics, were engaging and felt neither egregiously difficult nor insultingly simple, though I would like to point out one of the few flaws of this demo. Anita will call you way too often in order to offer tips. This aspect of the demo can feel a little handholdy when she basically leaves you no time to think on your own, and since this is the house's phone, you have to run all the way back to the starting location in order to answer it. That's also pretty much the only major complaint that I have about this demo. Another minor one I have is that the environmental distraction mechanics are really overdone. Just look at me go, I'm like Godzilla rampaging through Tokyo, I can't take that seriously. It kinda damages the suspense when I'm almost as destructive as this mysterious ooze and everything around me is smashing to pieces. I even got a chair to fly up in the air, though unfortunately I didn't catch that during the recording. Other than that, this demo is a really solid proof of concept, and I can't wait to see how this project progresses. This is one of the three demos currently planned, and the future releases will include more gameplay mechanics as the game enters next stages of development. I'll make sure to cover these as they come, and until then, I'm Audio Man, and I'll hear you next time.